School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Alberta Canola Producers Commission. Hello, I'm Troy Prasovsky, an agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada. I'm down here in southern Alberta with Real Agriculture talking about cutworms. Cutworms can be a significant pest in crop establishment with many crops, especially canola. Um, we're currently doing research for cutworms and it's, it's basically for three, three reasons, um, I think anyway. I think that maybe cutworms have been misdiagnosed in the past. Um, people have maybe chalked up cutworm issues to um, seedling disease or maybe seeding too deep or possibly compaction issues. Um, also, I think that, uh, you know, maybe farmers' practices have maybe evolved a little bit. Um, you know, we're, we're not, we're continuous cropping now, so that food source is always available for an insect such as cutworms because they do only have that one generation a year. Um, also, minimal till, it, uh, it maybe reduces the amount of mechanical damage that we'll have with cutworms. And, um, you know, we often generalize when it comes to cutworms, I guess would be the third reason. Uh, you know, we, um, we say that cutworms, um, we kind of give blanket recommendations. Cutworms uh, feed at night, they, they all feed above ground, and um, you know, we kind of have, um, we generalize them all in one category when there's, there's many different species of cutworms, and there's, there's about seven that do lots of damage for us in, um, in Alberta, and um, actually all throughout the prairies here. Um, you know, if we look at the redback, which is really common here in, um, in the prairies and as well as the dark-sided and the pale western, they'll actually um, overwinter as eggs. But then we look at the army and the dingy and, and um, some other species such as glassy and yellowhead, they'll actually overwinter as a uh, larvae. So it's, um, it's really difficult when we try to make recommendations on whether we should be spraying or not or, or whether we should be you know, controlling these. And, and keep in mind that all the control measures that we do have, um, you know, they're kind of nominal thresholds. So that means it's our best educated guess at this time. So therefore, um, the reason that we're doing all this, this good research. Um, and also we do have different larva feeding. So some are above ground feeders and some are below ground feeders. So where do we find cutworms um, is probably the next question that I, that I often get. And a good place to start looking for cutworms, like generally speaking, as you're walking into your field is maybe those south facing slopes, any soil that's gonna warm up maybe a little bit sooner. Um, you know, maybe any place that's really attractive for those female adult, or for those adult moths to lay their eggs. Um, I've heard lots of reports this season of growers that had tilled their land in the fall they um, was uh, that's where all the cutworm damage is that they're seeing this season. Um, also on pulse stubble such as uh, peas or, or lentils um, is also very attractive for cutworms. So I think that we have to keep that in mind when we're um, when we're looking for cutworms or also if we see gulls or any other birds feeding uh, they're congregating there and they're, they're looking for a food source so that's kind of where I would start in the field now once you get in the field and you're walking around you basically want to look for anything such as tipped over plants um, any bare spots you know you want to take that look real look early and often um, here coming across here we found some some plants that were clipped off and a little bit wilted and um, you know this is a prime candidate and a great area where I would start kind of looking now some cutworms will feed below ground and then some will will actually feed up above ground and um, it'll also depend on their um, their instar stage most cutworms We'll go, uh, we'll have five instars, some six and some even seven. So that's kind of where we generalize again. Um, but uh, cutworm feeding we'll mostly see on the stem or, um, or clipped off plants completely. And right where I see these clipped off plants is where I would start looking for the, for the culprit. So now that we've found the clipped off plants, I would just kind of look underneath here in these areas for the cutworm and I'd look in that top couple of inches. They don't really favor the moist soils and um, this, is, this is where they're going to be is in the drier soils. The wire worms are going to be a little bit deeper down feeding on the root systems. Now cutworms are nocturnal so they are going to come up at night and do their feeding and um, when we do disturb them during the day they typically curl in um, you know, completely into kind of like a ball and, um, and they're, they're a little bit more docile or, or almost suppressed and once we uh, 
once once we see them at night or look for them at night um, being nocturnal they're a lot more active and they'll they'll actually shoot right back into the holes so once we do find cutworms in the field um, you know you have to make that decision whether i should spray or not and our problem currently is uh, all the thresholds that we use are kind of a nominal threshold uh, one is 25 percent stand reduction and this is with canola um, 25 percent stand reduction but it's it's not very often that we find the stand reduction 25 percent it's it's usually in, in large bare patches or bare areas um, so therefore we could kind of spot spray sometimes um, Another nominal threshold that we use is, um, you know, when it exceeds three or four larvae, um, so three or four of the worms per square meter. And keep in mind that, that you want the, uh, the larvae should be still feeding. And, and um, how do you know that? It's uh, once it reaches, um, you know, a little bit longer than an inch in length, then they're, they're almost getting done their feeding. So the damage is pretty much done. Any spraying after then will be revenge spraying. But if you find lots in your field that are at that half inch, if that's what, what the size of the majority of them, um, you know, a control measure might be uh, warranted for sure for those. Um, also, you want to be spraying at nighttime or, or closer later in the day. It, uh, they are nocturnal and they, um, so they come up and they emerge and feed at night. Um, you want to have, uh, if you have a good kind of crop canopy and good dense canopy, sometimes uh, some products require you to increase the rate a little bit or if you do have the larger instars of uh, cutworms you might have to bump up that rate a little bit as well so make sure you you find the insects you find the cutworms and then you you, you measure them in size uh, an inch in length and you can even cut them open and if they're still really green inside then they're still actively feeding um, but once they get longer than that inch then they're going to burrow deeper into the soil and uh, kind of make um, a little uh, area to pupate and um, they'll uh, emerge as adult moss eventually after that. Mm -hmm.